YouTube, welcome back. Today I got something pretty exciting. I think I would like to show you Exhibit A. And what does this have in common with a weld-in cap? A piece of three inch tube, a piece of one inch tube, and a flat plate. Well, I don't know how well you can see from there. This cap is not on square. And so what's happened with my snow machine is I think due to constant pressure and cycling heat, this opening for the uh, cap is no longer round. And so what happens is I can put the cap on and off, but when it's fully threaded on, um, because it's egg shaped, this side pops off. I don't know if I can portray that well enough for you. That right there is not latching properly. So if you look at this other side, it's on all the way, but this side's pulled off. And it's because it's out around, like I can push that on and off, but it's, uh, it's no good. So a coolant system is supposed to be able to hold up to about 13 PSI. You don't want to be 13 PSI, but a max of 13 PSI. And what happens is the higher pressure makes it so your coolant doesn't boil over. When you don't have enough pressure, the liquids boil at a lower temperature, which means your machine will overheat, boil over, and vent off. And so this is not allowing me to obtain the right pressure, which causes my snow machine to overheat and boil over too soon. So I shot for this, and I can pop up right here, but this is $185 for this piece of plastic. And so I'm going to take this three inch and make a, lar a larger volume body that doesn't quite slide over the top of it without that spout of wood. So I'll be able to hold a little bit more liquid and then I'll cut this to make that piece and this piece. So it'll be like that. And then this plate's going to be to cap those. And so uh, I'll probably have to cut the outside diameter this out by hand because I don't have a three inch um, ID hole saw, um, but I'll cut caps to cap this and it'll drill one inch holes. One, the cap will go on the top, and then this piece will go on the bottom. And it'll just be a short, probably one and a half inch chunk to go vertical to a five inch piece going horizontal. At which point I have a um, bead roller. See there's a little taper on these ends to clamp the hose. I can run this through a bead roller and kind of flare the end so the hose will stay on there. So, let's get going. So I got a hole drilled in the cross tube and I got the other tube notched. So this should duplicate the bottom portion. I have my two caps made for this guy. So they'll weld onto there right like such. Before I weld them onto there though, I've got to weld the cap to one of them like such. And then I've got to weld this T to one of them, like such. And that'll just be easier to only have to do the outsides of these with everything attached. It would be nearly impossible to weld this guy on after that's enclosed. And not impossible, but very difficult to weld this guy on after that's enclosed. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna weld this T together. Um, I'll be running the Everlast PowerTig uh, 210 EXT. We'll probably run it somewhere around 110 amps. And then, like I usually do, I'll be using the TIG button for amperage control. I'm 
There's the cap on the T. So while that cools, we'll now weld the bung onto the main body. nice and warm but it should ought to work I'm gonna let it cool for a minute and then uh, we'll put the plug in right here and we'll uh, see if we can get it to fit all right the heater kicked down on the audio it's really crappy but there's a mounting tab so let's get this mounted in the snowmobile So there's the reservoir installed with the lid on. Not a ton of space around it, but she fits and it's leak tight. So So, there's another job done. I thank you guys for tuning in, for liking, commenting, subscribing, for enjoying this. Um, let me know what you did like, what you didn't like, what I've done wrong. So, anyways, thanks for watching. That sled's complete. Time to go get it on the hill. Ripping. So, thanks for watching.